uh, wobbling. <clears throat> Hi and welcome. Uh, every now and then uh, someone asks me uh, concerned about their uh, rear sprockets wobbling a bit as they are riding and uh, in most cases that is nothing to worry about. I will explain why but I will also in this video explain when you should be concerned. I will also explain the, what causes it and why it is often inevitable and why it is more pronounced on uh, freewheel systems and less pronounced on, on cassette systems or free hubs. I will also explain basic difference between those two systems. So let us begin first by showing what I am talking about in case you have missed it and don't be worried if you notice it on your bike. So we'll move the camera to be in line with this and try to demonstrate it. I will spin, it's most, uh, most pronounced when you are not spinning the pedals and moving your cassette, but when you are coasting, so the wheel is turning but your pedals are not moving. So let us try to show that. Okay, so the wheel is spinning and a bit violently and here I hope you can see relative to the to this one that the cassette is moving a bit left and right it is wobbling a bit maybe here it will be easier to notice it's making like a some small small motion like this that is the phenomena now why does it happen and what causes it? Let us try to discuss that and maybe because of lighting it would be best to switch places again. It's a bit, it's a bit narrow here. So, I will begin first by explaining the difference between the, the free wheel and the free hub or cassettes. I think it's easier for you to understand than all the other later talks. So, with free wheels, this is a, a free wheel. It is designed so that you have this inside mechanism that gets screwed onto the, the hub and it has small ratchets inside. So it's all a compact uh, one, uh, one part that gets screwed on the, the sprockets and the, the free wheel system with poles and ratcheting mechanism inside. And when you screw it onto a hub, it then allows you to, uh, when you're engaging and trying to turn your wheel forward, it will also turn the, the hub. But when you want to stop pedaling and just coast, it will let the wheel spin forward easily without the sprockets turning. It will also let you pedal backwards, of course, with no problem and engage when you wish to, to propel yourself forward. That is one design. With these designs, the the hub and its bearings will end uh, near where this is screwed on. Basically, there's no more room here to put any bearings or anything else. And the rest of the, this space is only the axle protruding to the, to the other side so that you have your lock nuts and so you can install the wheel without the frame being pressed directly against the, the, the free wheel. With cassettes, it is a bit different. This is a, a cassette hub or a free hub. Here the free wheel mechanism is inside the hub itself and you just uh, slide your cassette over it. Here is what that looks like. You just slide it over. The principle is the same but the free wheel mechanism is inside here. That is good for several reasons. One is that you can easily replace the, the sprockets without the whole mechanism going in and out. The second one is that you can put your bearings further out. So this is the inner race, oh sorry, the outer race of the right hand bearing. So it's all the way almost to the end of the of the hub, just like on the left hand side. That allows you to have your axle supported at both ends, unlike with the free free wheel mechanism where you would put your cassette here and your bearings would end up somewhere around here and so you would have all this length of the, the axle unsupported. 
That means that it is easier to break your axle. It starts by bending, but that's already cracked. And uh, that is uh, often the case with heavy riders when they use freewheel mechanism. It is a, may sound like a bit of a digression, but it, there is a point. I will now explain uh, what happens with uh, the wobble and why is it more pronounced with free wheels than it is with cassettes. So, here, this is a relatively a large diameter of the threads and the similar pattern is used for threads on the hub that you screw this onto. Because it is a huge diameter, relatively large, it is very difficult to machine it so precisely that this goes 100% centered when you screw it on. They will, if you make even slightest offset when you're machining that without uh, huge costs, then your cassette or freewheel will sit a bit at an angle. And so what happens is that when you are not uh, spinning your, your pedals, it's very easily seen because this is then stationary. As, as this is put at an angle uh, uh, relative to the wheel and it spins around this section that this sits on, spins around with the hub, so you will have, have it move as the, as the hub moves. So you first have the, the section going outwards at the top and then when the wheel spins for 180 degrees, then you have the section that is going inwards at the top and that is what you perceive as slight wobble as the, this turns. Of course, the, uh, the sprockets are not moving because they are on the, the mechanism allowing freewheeling, but the, what they are sitting on is making a sort of a tilt like this as the, uh, or, or more, more like this as the cassette, as the wheel spins. Now, why is that less pronounced with free hubs? Well, here is free hub design, a very typical one, but I will mention some exceptions also. I'm disassembling this, I've already removed the bearings. By the way, this is old Uniglide, so <laughs> I can even screw this on and make some sort of a Frankenstein, but the basic idea is <laughs> a bit different. This allows for uh, screwing on sprockets, it's an old system and I have an article on my website. You can go to bike.bikegramen.com and just google uh, Uniglide. You, will, you should get an article on that. So, let's disassemble this. Okay, so this is out. Now what we have here, you can see that the free hub body is pressed against the against the, the hub, so it's perfectly aligned when you press it against each other. You have this, uh, this uh, screw that is not too small, but it's a lot smaller in diameter compared to this one, and so it's easier to machine it more, more uh, to be perpendicular when you screw it in, but also as it only acts to press, acts to press this against the, the hub, then even if there is slight off center, the, this thing, thanks to the preload, will to a certain degree self-align itself. So for those two reasons, there is usually a lot less wobble, it's a lot less pronounced with decent quality free hubs. But there still is some. I will also now show another phenomena. And, okay, I, I needn't tighten this too much but even when it's all packed and tightened and everything with cassettes, you often have this, some play of the, of the free, free hub body. That is normal. When there's no load on the chain, it will make, have some play. And when you engage the free hub to spin your wheel forward, then the play disappears. The poles inside get a good bite and everything presses against each other and then it all, it all works nicely and the play is gone. And so even if you perceive some play, it's uh, completely relevant when you use, use the pedaling torque, it will, all, it will all be okay. Also, even for free wheels, the wobble itself is relatively small and it will not affect your shifting or performance in any measurable way. So generally it is nothing to worry about with the catch. That's why I mentioned the design and everything. 
Uh, first a small digression, then a catch. Okay, so for a small digression, some hubs, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, talking from memory, Chris King, uh, uh, DT Swiss and some other manufacturers, maybe some Campagnolo, uh, have the free hub mechanism that is not screwed onto the, the hub itself, but is placed uh, on, an egg, on the axle along, along and then when you apply some torque, there are teeth on one side on the free hub and similar teeth on the other side on the cassette. So they bite into each other and, and make it turn and in reverse they allow for, for free wheeling. So they are not uh, aligned, aligned against each other, but they are both aligned relative to the, to the axle. So there's even less wobble propensity, so to say. But generally the wobble is not so much pronounced on most, practically all uh, decent quality free hub systems. So, and now uh, when, is, when is it that you should be worried about uh, the, the wobble? If you see that it is very pronounced, so you have a few millimeters turning, and uh, e uh, if you have very huge uh, chain rings in the, in the back, sprockets in the back of 50 teeth or whatever, now they make those abominations with 1x drive trains and similar, and uh, uh, if you see that there's a lot of movement that may might affect shifting, but if you see a lot of movement on moderately sized sprockets, then you can almost certainly conclude that something is off. Either poor quality machining or something is not tightened properly, maybe something is uh, loose or loosening, or maybe your axle is bent or already completely broken. So then you should check it out and see, is everything spinning smoothly, is everything uh, tightened, is there no play where there should not be play and so on. I've already made videos about servicing uh, hubs and so on, so I will not bother you with, with that <clears throat> to not make the video last for hours. But there are some reasons when it is excessive, even if it is not excessive, it's always a good idea to check it out. Is everything spinning smoothly and tightened properly? So that's something that, that you should uh, take care of but, uh, and uh, check, but you should generally not be too much concerned about your uh, cassette wobbling, it does not affect shifting, it uh, poses no problem on the performance or anything, or even dur durability, and it's uh, one of the peculiarities of uh, bicycle <laughs> parts and so on. So I hope this video answers that question fully. If you have any uh, other questions or comments or corrections, use the comment section below. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in some other video and the next time someone asks me about this, I will just send them the video and save myself some, <laughs> some time. <laughs> so I'll see you in some video. Ciao! Thank you.